Hello, I'm Kit Watts um, with the IMEX Group. I'm here with Jane Cunningham, who's Director of International Associations with Best Cities Global Alliance. Hello, Jane. Hi there. Welcome. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about your organisation, if you wouldn't mind. Yes, yeah, certainly. Best Cities is an alliance of convention bureau. Um, we started in 2000, back with just a couple of founding members. I think they initially met in a bar and decided that they could share a lot of intelligence. Once an international congress has been to one destination, it's very unlikely that it'll go back for certainly a long time. So how can they really help the association and help each other in the alliance by learning? And at that stage in 2000, there were a number of convention bureaus around, but maybe they didn't have the same high standards that our bureaus were setting at that stage. So it was very much driven on service standard. Now we've evolved, we are 12 cities now. We have Berlin, Bogota, Cape Town, Copenhagen, Dubai, Edinburgh, Houston, Melbourne, Singapore, Tokyo and Vancouver. So a truly global alliance. And now it's more about the partnerships, the collaborations, the really going beyond and helping our associations with their outcomes to create really positive impacts in the societies where these conferences are taking place and to the, to the country itself. Mm, fascinating. So what does that collaboration look like in real life? How does it really work? Well, we have a management company, so I work for the management company, and we work a lot together on coordinating different activities. We have a shared um, CRM system, a client relationship system, where the cities need to feed in bid intelligence, and also we generate leads. We create great platforms where we can bring associations and the destinations together so that they can truly be learning, sharing from each other. And we're wanting to build this community, essentially, so that our international associations know that they're not just dealing with one city, that when they, they deal with, let's say, Vancouver, they know that they've got this 11 strong city and the global reach that they have behind us to help them get their mission and their word out um, around the world. Mm. And collaboration is one of the art values at IMEX. It's often one of those elements in life. It's easier to say than to live. Mm -hmm. Have you got any um, practical tips about things to avoid or perhaps challenges you've, you've learned to address along the way for others who might be watching this? Oh, I think um, with collaboration, it can only really work if everybody's on the same page. Mm -hmm. I think if everybody's wanting to be as open and as trusting, then it works. If you've got some parties that are maybe not quite in that same zone, then I think it can be extremely hard. But we, we are all, all across the world, but it's trying to make sure that when we have these face-to-face -face opportunities, mm -hmm. like coming to IMEX, you make absolutely the most out of that. And we love facilitating these encounters where we create really wonderful environments where collaborations are built. I love when uh, a couple of our strategic thinkers, we call them, met at one of our events and then one ended up speaking at the other's conference and they're not totally related, these associations, but you can see how this cross-collaboration can make a huge impact in destinations, but also for the associations themselves. Mm, wonderful. So it sounds like the alliance actually organically allows people to, to, to network in a way that they wouldn't otherwise. So exactly. that coming exactly. together has value just in itself. Yeah. And do you, do you have annual meetings? What's, what's the structure? I mean, how, how do you meet or talk to each other? How do you engage throughout yes, the year? Yes, exactly. Well, we have our global forum. And they used to be a little bit more like client workshops, you know, speed dating in a destination, where it's now it's far more about the education, but also understanding that when we bring international association leaders into the room, they have so much experience. Our destinations have so much experience for all the international associations they've hosted that when they come together, really magical things happen. And this year, we're delighted to be going to Copenhagen. And the theme is fortifying impact and looking at the Congress of the future. So we're working with the Danish Design Centre and futurologists to say, how's it going to look? And out of this, uh, um, we will come up with a white paper, we'll come up with a digital platform that can be used in the industry. So we really want to be doing things that not only helps us as, as an alliance of cities and the clients we serve, but actually it's something for the meetings industry as a whole. Mm, so that sounds exciting. wonderful. Yeah. Oh, yes, I love the trends and futurology yeah. piece. I love that. Yeah. 
We have a lot of associations in our industry, don't mm. we? What do you think, and the, the value proposition for those has changed considerably mm. over the years, certainly since I've been in the industry, mm. including this, um, this pressure, if you like, to recruit younger people in who perhaps don't always understand the value. How do you mm. uh, refute that or how do you describe it to people when they're not certain about actually mm. joining an, an, an association? Yeah, exactly. Well, I think we have Two, two sides to that. We have the association world on the meetings industry, the supplier community mm -hmm. of people understanding at school level that there is an industry in working in the, in the meetings industry. And I sometimes speak at universities to say, and this is my career, this is what I've done. And so many occasions you, people say, I didn't realise there was a job in that. You know, yeah. so there's that piece. But then with international associations who haven't perhaps changed as dramatically due to maybe the decision-making process and the board decisions and volunteer boards, that it can be harder. And we are delighted with a recent um, awards programme that we've come up with, and it's called Inspiring Young Leaders. So really finding out from international associations, what are you doing to get the next generation involved in your association? Because they may see it as, oh, it's a group of perhaps older people, and do I, do I actually need to be part of an association? Can I get what I need online or in my own little communities? And I think this is, a, is really exciting because it's trying to get across the importance of lifelong learning, that, you know, educating yourself cannot stop after you've been to college or university or school, that being part of a community, learning from experts. So we were delighted to award two of our association clients, ISUOG and ISME. Um, <laughs> I can go into that later, but um, because of the, the activities that they are doing where they are um, awarding young experts or young researchers or um, ISME when they go to Cape Town, the, the award's going to be used to make sure that they bring more African delegates that may not normally be able to attend the conference from other countries in Africa down to, to South Africa. So these are exciting and this is really where we are trying to have an impact on associations and help them with their goals and mission which will also help our communities where our cities are. Mm, wonderful. Yeah. Jane, tell me more about the impact that, that an association can make when it takes a big event to a destination. You're at the, at the sort of heart of that, that yeah. story. Tell yeah. us more about yeah. that. I mean, I think when you look at associations, essentially what their mission is is often impactful anyway. Mm. So if it's a medical association that are wanting to eradicate a certain disease, that's impactful on the world. If it's, a, if it's a farming association that wants to find better ways of farming or more sustainable ways, then that has impact. And I think maybe in the past, at, in destinations, conferences would come, they would meet, people would say it's busy in town at the moment, and yeah. the conference would come and go. And what we're now trying to do, and, and it is, I think, the destinations have a huge role to play because especially the convention bureaus and our alliance, you know, they really are the, the door openers to the destination. So an international association may have their local host and know some people in the, in the destination, but not the same number of people or potential opportunities. And it's creating, again, it's amazing things that come out when you bring people around a table. Mm -hmm. So finding out who could be the stakeholders, who would benefit, should we do, and it might not always be the same thing, and this is the information we want to gather. Is it, is it involving youth? Is it getting into universities and um, so that they realise this is a specialty they could get into? Or is it making sure those experts that are coming to that conference manage to speak to the, the, the universities? Or is there something that they're doing more in a community awareness? You know, when we talk about the European Lung Foundation, for example, you know, years ago they were saying that they would have a pop-up in the main square of people that have uh, lung issues to come and chest check their lung capacity, where they flipped it now. It's like, come and learn about clean air. So they're out there in main squares. Yes. How important it is for us to be using public transport, how important it is for us to understand the air around us. So school kids are having little air measurement things so they can check if the air quality is good around their environment. It's a completely different um, ball game now. And, yeah. and it's really exciting. And I think um, associations are wanting to know what the destination can do because essentially they're looking at their main mission and all the advocacy things that they're doing at the association. But I think the destination and the supplier community can really help the association by suggesting different things that they can do that can make an impact. And at the end of the day, the conferences that come in and the economic spend is something. Yeah. But it's that whole piece that's under the, the tip of the iceberg when it comes to building capacity, knowledge transfer, all these wonderful things um, 
that happen, which I could talk about for hours, yes, so I don't want to go into yes. it. But it really can, can springboard a destination, you know, where they have the knowledge, they have the universities and in that topic, and you bring in all these experts, boom. Mm. So, um, Best Cities and um, ICA have our Incredible Impacts Awards. Um, so we've been doing that for a couple of years, and it really is just wanting to celebrate associations that can um, highlight and show us their beyond tourism impact that their conferences have on our destinations. So the, for this year, um, we um, the deadline is the 30th of June to be able to, for associations or destinations can put forward associations as well where they have a, a great story of impact. And then there'll be a short list um, from our association judges and then they will be presented at uh, the three winners were pre presented with the 7,500 US dollar grant, which will be at the ICA Congress in Houston in October, which we're very excited, excited about being another best city going from Dubai to Houston and this knowledge that's been transferred from one to the next. Excellent. Exciting. Yeah. Jane, can you tell me a bit about the power of taking a big event to a destination that perhaps has had a troubled past or, or has a reputation or a story around it that appears negative? What's the mm. value or, or who's doing that in the marketplace? Because certainly in our industry, we know how powerful that can be. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, the one that springs to mind is Cape Town, having such an issue with their water levels and how they were e um, able to, to turn that into a positive angle to really get associations behind it, to really understand the importance of water saving. So they, that is a wonderful story and hopefully we can, we can go into that in more detail another time or perhaps with, with Cape Town. But I think what is also very interesting is when associations make their decisions based on more of a mission decision. Right. So they may be going to destinations that they know this destination is really easy to get to, maybe it's in Central Europe, they know mm. they're going to get good delegate numbers, you know, the money from the conference funds so many other activities so it's important that their conference is a great success but then there's a point I think in their cycle where they look out look for other destinations that are being unserved so if they've got this global membership but then they're not taking their conference to these regions and one of our incredible impact winners from the very first year the World Confederation of Physical Therapy took their conference to Cape Town for exactly that reason. They realised that their previous conference in Singapore only had 3% of African delegates. And then when they took it to Cape Town, they got 26%. Way more abstracts were submitted from the region. So it absolutely makes a difference. And it's making sure that all those people that were able to attend the conference then go back into their communities. They share the knowledge that they learned. So it really is, it's, it's closing that knowledge gap and creating more opportunities for people who perhaps may not normally be able to, to travel the long distances to go to, to the global conference. And I think that is hugely important, that there is a mission behind the, the reasons why destinations are being selected. So. Mm. Mm. Jane, you've been a speaker here with us this week at IMEX. I hope you've enjoyed it and had a, a good audience. Um, do you enjoy speaking? What do you think the benefit is of, of turning up at a show like this and taking part in an education programme as you've done? Yeah, I, I love speaking. I, I think if there's a topic that you're passionate about, then, then you know, I, I could speak all day. But I think what's, what's really interesting is the volume of information that is out there. This is what I've realised that people will say, did you read that article? And I go, I read the headline. I've not had time to yes. read it yet. And you think there is so much information that if speakers are able to then pick the things that really are important to them or resonate to the, the cause that they are talking about and be able to disseminate that in the right way to get engagement and make people feel inspired and more knowledgeable as a result of that session, then that's really all you can hope for. I really enjoyed my session on Monday at Edu Monday because it was a nice format in the room. There was some low seating, some higher seating. I was speaking for an hour, but decided to not speak too long, have some videos that people hadn't seen. I thought they may have seen them because they've been on the Iceberg platform, which is a great platform for lots of positive stories of impact. But it was great to let them have the opportunity to see them there mm -hmm. and then have them working in groups. So getting strangers together, we're all here to, to build our networks, to learn from one another. And the group work, work, the group work uh, was a really good activity. So they came up with something at the end of it, which worked well. I wish I'd been there. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank That's you. Good. Thank you.